So guys, in this next news story, a gang which went on a rampage across the West Midlands stormed out of court after they were jailed for nearly 50 years. Jason, McDonough, Darren, Hall, Halloran, Barney Casey and Daniel Harty plundered nearly £350,000 worth of jewellery, cash and belongings as they raided properties in Birmingham, Sandwell, Solihull and Warsaw. The gang were brought down by a joint investigation between West Midlands Police and Garda Shiohana. All four who were originally from Ireland were found guilty of conspiracy to burgle following a trial at Birmingham Crown Court and today they were sentenced to a total of 47 years and 6 months. It's believed in court they turned their back on the judge Andrew Smith Casey as the deterrent punishments were confirmed prompting emotional scenes in the public gallery. He described their racket which ran from mid-November to February the 1st as a highly organised and carefully planned agreement to commit criminal offences. Detectives first established that an Audi RS3 and a Golf R which were put on false plates and used to flee the scenes. The gang wore masks, carried weapons and used a spray to remove forensic evidence. There were 54 burglaries in total, with the belongings stolen conservatively valued at around £348,710, not including the cost of damage caused. In 14 of the break-ins, there were occupants present, including one incident where a mother holding an 18-month-old child in the hallway was confronted by intruders wielding a baseball bat and a screwdriver. McDonough, who's aged 32, was identified as the buyer and seller of the Audi with the three other defendants connected through him. Him, or Halloran, who's 38 and Casey, who's 22, a tractor Yorkshire while Harty was found in Wales. However, it's believed at least six other people are yet to be identified who were also involved. The prosecutor, Sarah Slater, said this was a sophisticated operation. They were forensically aware and there were attempts to disguise their involvements. They sourced two vehicles for use and targeted addresses where high-value jewellery money and other items could be stolen. They acted as a team and swapped team members to avoid detection. The court heard statements from victims who had been left shaken by the break-ins while many had sentimental items stolen. McDonough played the leading role and took part in 46 of the raids and he was sentenced to 13 years. However, his defence argued he was disadvantaged due to being born into a traveller family and did not have the tools to support himself in work. He added that he's a father of two and he had struggled with his mental health whilst in custody. O'Halloran was involved in eight to ten break-ins and he received 12 years. Lewis Perry, the defence for him, told the court he was a father of a number of children and he suffered anxiety and depression. There was case he was connected to 36 burglars in his jail for 10 years and 6 months and his defence said that he's of a young age and he's a lack of previous conviction. He stated he moved to Ireland, to England, after a relative committed suicide, adding that he was remorseful. In this hearty, he took part in 22 of the incidents and was punished to 12 years and his defence stated he lacked the courage to take responsibility for his actions out of fear from being away from his family. And guys, in this next news story, a man who killed his former partner before hiding her body in a suitcase which he threw in a wheelie bin has been found guilty of a murder. Matthew Waddle, who's 35, then taped up the bin where the remains of Sarah Albon had been put while he told her family and friends she was treated in hospital. Luton Crown Court heard the 38-year-old victim who had multiple sclerosis had been killed in a frenzied and horrific attack at her home in Biggleswade in Bedfordshire. The suitcase was finally found on the 25th of February, three months after the mother of three was last seen. Just want to say rest in peace, Miss Albon, and my condolences quite to your family. In the meantime, Mr Matthew Waddle sent text messages from her mobile phone using her bank cards and sold her belongings to throw family, friends and the police off the scent the court heard. Waddle denied murdering the mother of three at her home between the 20th of November last year and the 26th of February, but he was convicted by the jury. The prosecutor, Martin Mulgrew, said officers found the purple suitcase wrapped in industrial cling film 
under the remains of a carpet in the bin. She was found in her pyjamas in the fetal position. In the witness box, Waddle said he had snapped after suffering years of abuse. He told the jury it was like a curtain came down. It is a feeling like you would not believe. You literally go numb. You stop feeling. But prosecutors told the court that her family had become worried for Miss Albon because of the toxic nature of her relationship with Mr Waddle. She was last seen in November and over the following months Waddle began to imitate her in text messages to friends and family to cover up her disappearance, even asking for money. A friend received messages from someone purporting to be Ms Albon claiming to be in hospital and asking for cash but suspected that something was wrong because of the grammar and language used in the messages. Miss Albon was reported missing on the 21st of February with Waddle telling police officers that she was in hospital though medical records did not match up. Shortly after officers had left, they had received a message supposedly from Miss Albon claiming to be safe and well, which they traced to her. Officers searched the house, finding bloodstains inside and areas where carpet had been removed as Waddle tried to cover his tracks. When the dogs were brought in, Miss Albon's body was located. Judge Simon Michael remanded Waddle in custody for sentencing on Thursday and Detective Chief Inspector Ian Moore of the Bedfordshire, Cambridge and Hertfordshire Major Crime Unit led the investigation said this was a horrifically violent and despicable crime which has cost a woman her life. Sarah was a vulnerable woman who made several attempts to leave Waddle but he continued to manipulate her in a bid to remain a part of her life. When he felt like he was fully losing control in the relationship he launched his fatal attack. His actions did not end after the attack. He went to great lengths to cry and cover up what he had done and he continued to coercive behaviour as he lied to Sarah's family and friends. He said our thoughts were with Sarah's family and our close friends at this time and Detective Chief Superintendent Zara Brown, the force's new male violence against women and girls lead added, this kind of controlling and violent behaviour is dangerous and unacceptable and demonstrates how this type of Behaviour can escalate rapidly. He said, we know that people are living with abuse and in fear and we know that it's not always easy to walk away. And as a force, we will continue to advocate for the safety of women and girls by providing safe space for women to report and access support. So guys, once again, I just want to say rest in peace to the victim and my condolences go out to the family. Guys, if you already haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel and please hit a like on this video. If you do hit a like, it'll help the algorithm in promoting this video and this channel also. So guys, that was a few stories coming out of the streets of the UK tonight. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked. Keep it real.